Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over every single engine in my collection. I hope you enjoy, and yeah, just, here we go, and be glad you're not listening to the original audio. Now this is a oh, little 060 end scale engine. I do not know who made it. I do not run it that much since it is a very poor runner. And yeah, it's end scale so it doesn't even fill on the track properly. Now, this engine is one of two end scale engines I will be featuring in this video. And the next one should be coming up in a few seconds. So this one does not have as much detail. And uh, it used to have a smokestack, but then that somehow got lost. And now we have a Bachman 280 uh, consolidation type. This one is from the 1980s. It has a fair bit of detail. It does not run the best due to it being Bachman in 80s. So this one also has a tender, and it is one of the few with uh, an actual functioning headlight. Now I was not able to get the headlight on because A, H, O scale track, and B, it's Bachman. So the wheels on this thing also will have separated from each other like a lot of other fucking steam engines have. So yeah, that's that engine. And we should be moving on to the next engine now. This is a... EMD Model 40. They are, it is very small, but crammed with detail. It was made in 2016. And does not run very well. But it's a small diesel, so it's not supposed to. And it has sprung... KS... Strong Ather and plastic couplers, and it is basically tiny diesel. It does have directional lighting and, a, and it's DCC ready. And it is also packed with detail, like I said earlier. So, yeah, that's that engine. Now we are on to a uh, model power 040 shunter. This is Pennsylvania Railroad. It is number 13, I think. Yes, 13. It it has a fair bit of detail, directional lighting, and plastic McHenry's. Like a lot of things in my fleet which should not have McHenry's. It is it has the same amount of wheel right wheel pickups as the diesel, but is a fair bit more reliable due to the larger wheels. It was made in around the 80s or 90s and runs pretty well. And I do believe that it might have been used before me. Now we have a Athern Blue Box switcher engine from the Pennsylvania Railroad. Like before, McHenry's, stuff like that. Fair bit of detail. The horn on it is pretty damaged. That I've had to go on multiple times due to it being damaged. The grab irons are all there except for some of the front. And overall is a nice little diesel engine. I cannot I completely forget the number of it though. It does have a light facing forward on it. And yeah, I do believe that is it for this engine. Now and if now if we keep going. Now coming up here we have a Lima or Lima, whatever they're called. 040 tank, not tank engine, tender engine. This is by Lima in Italy, and it runs horribly. It can't haul anything. Its power pickups are worn out to the point of it can barely pick up power. But it's my first ever steam engine, so I like it. It also has a Bachman tender after its original tender cracked into a million pieces. It fell off a table one day and landed on a giant metal it landed on a giant metal rod which in turn made the tender crack over time which snapped in half. There's very there's not that much detail on it besides the grab irons. And yeah, that's basically all for this engine. It is Pennsylvania Railroad like a lot of other things in my fleet. 
And next up, we have the first DCC equipped engine in my fleet. This is a Proto 2000 F unit. I believe it's an F3. It has a KE couplers, a door on the back, well, a diaphragm on the back, whatever you call them, and train phone antennas. This one has a couple of details on it that are added apart from the actual engine. And installing DCC and sound on this was a pain. Because in order to fit the speaker and the decoder and the capacitor in, so many wires broke that everything had to be resoldered. So that was annoying. And this engine is semi-reliable, semi-not. It will go over some switches and stall out because of the wheels. And here we are onto the Athern F unit. This one also has trained foot antennas installed by me and McHenry's. Always with McHenry's. This is a custom paint with customly applied decals. This one's still in the works with new trucks needing to be f sorted out. But it is my one of my favorite engines. It is semi-reliable when it, when it does run. And it is missing its front headlight due to it being broken or burned out. I can't figure out which. So yeah, that's all for this engine. Now yeah, I forgot, this does have a custom part coming in for it, but you're going to have to wait to see what that is. Along with grab irons being annoying. So yeah, that should be it for this engine. Now on to the next engine, which is a Bakken Spectrum Train Master. Well, maybe Train Master. This is a Baltimore and Ohio variant. With the, all the grab irons, handrails, and sprung plastic couplers. It does have little figures in the cab like all the other Spectrum engines. And runs semi-reliably. It does have directional lighting. And sadly is not DCC equipped yet. It is missing a couple details like the steps on the front. And the horns are all there. Interesting story about this engine, I've had it for years now, but it's been in my closet since I've had to pack away a couple of my trains due to my dog being a dog, and practically being Godzilla. So yeah, that should be all for this engine for now. And now we are coming up on two other engines. This is a double entry considering they're both the exact same engine. These are Walther's uh, Jeeps, can't remember what exact type of Jeep. They are a, they're 90, they're both number 1299, or 9912, I can't remember. Yeah, 9912. They have decent bit of separately applied details. One of them had a figure on the front that I removed. And these are pretty good runners. The wheels are brass, so they oxidize pretty quickly. They also have freshly geared freshly lubricated everything so they run piece pretty well and I don't plan on doing any modifications to them apart from changing the numbers but we're just gonna have to see what happens now we have an Alco RS3 by Bachman this is their DCC line it has decent detail its current draws through the roof though for some reason I can never figure out why it is a decent runner it has a pretty good amount of detail and directional lighting. This engine was pretty cheap. I got it for eighty dollars. I am hoping it can last a long time since this is the only DCC alco I have. Funny story about this engine. I got it and it took five weeks to ship here because it got stuck on a ocean liner. Now here we have an interesting piece. This is a Bachman 80s U-boat, Santa Fe 350. All of its details are off, and the only separately applied detail on it right now is a horn. It also has the uh, McHenry's, like usual. The only reason why I have this in my collection is it is the first ever engine I ever got. And I'm trying to get it back to running condition. It, it, it does run. This is a horrible runner. It takes forever to move. Its power pickups are basically nothing. 
and I just need to add the handrails onto it and do a bit of on, do a bit of work on the drivetrain. It should work fine. Apart from those nylon gears. Now here we have an Ather Blue Box Alco PA. This also has a couple of separately applied details, like the keystone on the front and the lettering. Well, not the lettering, the numbering. This one is an interesting piece. I got it at a train show for twenty dollars. Guy said did not run. I opened it up when I got home and realized that the trucks were broke. The trucks, the pivot thing on the trucks were broken. So I well were bent. So I bent them back into place and it ran great after that. I plan on converting it to DCC and it also has Katie's installed. Now this one has a the wrong type of horn, so I gotta fix that. And yeah, apart from that, it is pretty good engine. Athen really didn't apply any separately applied details. Now here we have an IEC 260 mogul. This is from the Delaware and Hudson, and it is a decent runner. I usually haul the whole. I usually have it to haul old time cars, like you saw in a couple of shorts I had. This has a lot of separately applied detail. It does have McHenry's on it, unfortunately. And there's a couple of things on it I still need to fix after the last uh, incident I had with it. I'll explain that in the next video. But apart from that, it is a decent engine. It is number 269. And I do plan on adding cab figures in the cab to like a fireman and an engineer. Now here we have a IC. 280 consolidation for the also the Darwin Hudson. I bought this at the exact same time I bought the Mogul, and it runs just as well. It do, it sadly does need a little bit of work, but it does have Katie's, as you can see when the tender comes around. It also has a separately applied bell that I added myself. Details are great, runs well. It does have the weird issue that I see it's have where the rear wheel will come up every time it does a rotation. If you can kind of see that with the side rod. So yeah, that's everything about this engine. Apart from the fact that it does have directional lighting. For some reason. Now we have an IHC GG1 number 4800. This was actually the first electric locomotive I ever owned. It does not have directional lighting. But it does have the ability to get power from the pantographs and the rails, which I never got considering why would you power pantograph lines in model form. In real life, that's essential. But here it sort of is. Well, it isn't. It is equipped with KDs and it runs very well. It is two motors. So that's interesting about it. The trucks on it, I opened them up one day. There was hair all over it because the person before me they ran it so much so when i got it i didn't notice that and when i cleaned out all the hair i had to re-lubricate it because that's the hair took off all the grease now we have a bachman gg1 with ecc no sound sadly this has a lot of separately applied detail on it it runs very well and has directional lighting sort of the light that is going in the direction it's going it is brighter than the one going it back it the pantographs are retractable just like the last one and it, it does run DCC like I said earlier nothing too interesting about that engine now we have the last engine in the fleet this is a 482 IHC Mikado type no not Mikado that mountain this is from the New York Central and it runs very well this one, I do plan on keeping and probably going to modify into something of my own. Replace the smoke box store for Pansy and do a couple of other things. Sadly, no Katie's. <laughs> like all my engines. But it is very well done. It does have a flywheel like a lot of engines. And that is it for this video. Now, if you liked it, please subscribe and click the like. And if you already are subscribed, thank you for watching. And... Yeah, this, thanks. My channel did recently hit 200 subscribers, so I will see you all later. Goodbye.